My name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, May the 1st. Yes, we've moved into a new month. And so, <clears throat> as uh, is uh, normal for us in our evening services, we will sing several songs, and we will observe the Lord's Supper, and I will have a message for you. Um, we are singing from the hymn book, Songs of Faith and Praise, which is the book we use at Northfield. Uh, but I will give you the title of the song. If uh, you have another book or you have your device where you can Google the title so that you can sing along with us. And so if you would, please, if you would turn to number 116, the title of this song is God Will Make a Way. We'll sing through twice. God will make a way. <clears throat> God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. The next song we'll sing is Glorify Thy Name. It is number 77. Glorify thy name. <clears throat> Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Jesus, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name, glorify thy name in all the earth. Spirit, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. A few pages back to number 68. The title of the song is Give Thanks. <clears throat> Give 
will sing this song in preparation for the Lord's Supper. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. This is the part of uh, our service where we do indeed give thanks. We give thanks um, with a grateful heart. We give thanks to our holy God that uh, he sent Jesus to us. Uh, what a wonderful gift that he gave to us, sending his son, as John 3.16 says, it was his only begotten son. And uh, we're, we're Joe, just so grateful that Jesus came into the world to save us. His teachings were magnificent and his sacrifice, which is what we commemorate at this time, was also magnificent. Uh, he ended uh, a reign of, of physical sacrifices of animals uh, with the perfect sacrifice as he gave himself up for each one of us. The symbols that are before us uh, portray the body that hung on the cross and portray the blood that Jesus shed for each of us. The The body lets us know that uh, he suffered uh, in our stead. The blood lets us know that that life force left him. And uh, there is a, an extra to that in that the blood of Jesus washes away our sins. So as we gather about this table, let's think of his body and let's think of his blood. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just uh, thankful beyond words for uh, the lives that we have, the lives that we have in you, the lives that we have with a chance of eternal life with you because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would be with us as we partake, as we think of that broken body which hung on the cross, as he gave himself up that we might live. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember what Jesus did on the cross. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> in the last of the plagues when uh, the children of Israel uh, were able to escape from Egypt uh, it was the death of the firstborn and the children of Israel were instructed to place blood over the doorposts and uh, 
when they did that, the angel of death passed over them. Isn't it interesting that we find that comparison, that the angel of death will pass from us if we accept the blood that Jesus shed that washes away our sins and that we uh, understand uh, how uh, wonderful uh, that life-giving blood was and still is. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your son was willing to shed his innocent blood. We're just so thankful that uh, he did so willingly. We thank you that he did so in realization that uh, that the, the blood would be the blood of our salvation and it would be the cleansing of our sins. We just thank you so much for this and we thank you so much that Jesus was willing to go through that for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. As we have completed the Lord's Supper, we now come to the part of uh, our service where we give back to the Lord that which we have been blessed. We know that there are so many examples in our New Testament of people who have given back to the Lord. We know in the first century church that uh, the people sold their property and gave to those that are in need. And one of the efforts that we try to do in our church is to give to those who indeed are in need. And uh, uh, we just uh, thank you that we are able to give and we pray that these monies will be uh, used properly uh, for their intended purposes, that more may come to the Lord. Let's pray for the giving. We thank you so much, dear God, for uh, the ability that we have to give, the desire that we have to give. We know that as we've just completed the, the Lord's Supper, that Jesus gave his life for us. We're asked to give uh, in monetary terms back to the church that Jesus established with his life, give back to the church that it can uh, accomplish uh, its mission on earth that his uh, your son said as he ascended into heaven, go into all the world and preach the good news. Bless us as we give. Help us to do so with a, an open heart, with gratitude and with joy, because what we give is but your own. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Alrighty, we have one more song. It is number 601. It's my God and I, 601. <clears throat> my God and I go in the field together. <clears throat> We walk and talk as good friends should and do. We clasp our hands, our voices ring to laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows, you. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows you. He tells me of the years that went before me. When heavenly plans were made for me to be. When all the earth a dream of dim conception, 
to come to life, first bird in glory see. We clasp her not a dream of dim conception, to come to life, earth's bird and glory see. My God and I will go for a together. We'll walk and talk as good friends should and do. This earth will pass and with it come and dry falls. But God and I will go unendingly. This earth will pass and with it come and dry falls. My God and I will go unendingly. Oh, I just enjoyed the singing so much. I know that the Lord was praised. I hope that you were able to get involved and, uh, as you can tell, I do really, really enjoy singing praises to the Lord. And so um, it is an important part of our service. It is one of those things that we are instructed to do. So let's give praise to the Lord whenever we get a chance. If you were there this morning, uh, you know that I let uh, the folks know that this evening's service uh, the title of my lesson would be God is all that we lack and more. <laughs> I want to add that just to make sure God is all that we lack and more. There's an old axiom out there. It's not a biblical axiom, but it's one that I've heard people use over and over again. And that is that there are two immutable truths in the world. One, there is a God, and two, I'm not him. And so with that in mind, uh, when we think in terms of God being what we really lack, um, let us know that God is God, and we are not. As our perfect creator, uh, God is everything that we are not. He thinks on a different plane. He is on a different plane. He knows all. He is all. And we are so incomplete, which we'll get at in, uh, uh, a little bit later on in this lesson. He's, he's literally the answer to all of our questions. He is the sufficiency who can supply all of our needs. When we pray to the Lord, very often we pray that our needs will be fulfilled and we pray that the needs of others will be fulfilled. And with that, sometimes that sends us into action. It sends us into action to, to literally do what we can to help others. Maybe it's sending money into mission fields where uh, people just uh, don't have the means that we have. Uh, we have here at the Northfield Church for a couple of Saturdays over the past couple of months gone into Atlantic City and uh, brought food and some clothing uh, to the homeless people. It's amazing how fast the food goes and uh, it's amazing how that uh, that material is used and, and, you know, it's not hard to do that, but what we're doing is that, that we're trying to, to be God's hands here on earth because he is the fish sufficiency who can supply all of our needs. And so with that, perhaps the, the, the greatest need that we have is to recognize our need to seek in God the perfection that we don't find in ourselves. Now, you know what? God does not call on us to be perfect. Even though the words are used sometimes, 
to connote that. Uh, he doesn't call on us to be perfect, but he does call upon us to be godly in our lives. He calls on us to be the salt of the earth. He calls us to be the light of the world. Why? Because we can't do that on our own. We can only do that with God as our foundation, the foundation that he is, the, the bedrock. Indeed, he is all that we lack and even more than that. It's always interesting when I think of that. Uh, you know, I think of my life and, you know, we, we do live our lives from moment to moment, don't we? We do that because we know that uh, there are certain things that are not promised to us. Uh, what is not promised to us is another day of life. And so uh, we take each moment and each, each minute, each hour, uh, and we live it, uh, hopefully to the fullest and for the Lord. Um, if we do that, uh, because we are God's eyes and ears and hands and feet here on earth. Now, with that in mind, and, and I, I stated this already, the, the first thing that we understand is that we are incomplete. We are not God. Whether, whether we speak of our longings, of our needs, or even if we uh, put it in terms of our tendency toward growth and development. Somehow, we're always doing that with the underlying understanding that um, we're not perfect. We ask to grow because we haven't grown enough. We ask that we have the ability, perhaps, to teach others because uh, we were taught ourselves and maybe we don't know exactly how, so we go to the word of God to help us in that area. Now, you know, there's another old term out there, and I think it applies here. A and that is, we are a work in progress. You know, we were told that when we were young, we, we drank milk. We know that babies do that. It's all that their bodies can process at that time. And very often as young Christians, young Christians need the milk of God's word because they're not ready for the, they're not ready for the, the solid food. The solid food, uh, the body has to work harder uh, to break it down and to uh, digest it. And so we are uh, literally what we might call works in progress. And there are things about us that we need, yet that we do not have. It's why we pray to the Lord. You know, we don't have peace and we pray for peace. Sometimes, um, Sometimes we have uh, things in our lives that we're not satisfied with uh, about how our progress is going along. And we pray to the Lord. Sometimes we understand that we're not wise enough. And so we turn to the first chapter of the book of James, where James says, if you're looking for wisdom, go to God and he will supply you with that wisdom. When we need uh, uh, to be lifted up, to be buttressed, we go to the truth of God's word, where God's word will provide us with the way that we need to go. It is the, the light unto our path. It's, it's the lamp that will guide us along our way. And so... We are a work in progress, but we want to progress. Why? Because we lack <clears throat> God's traits and we want to be more godlike in our lives. 
And so whatever the things are that we need, God is all of those. God understands all, sees all, knows all. And there's no necessity of life that he cannot meet. Jesus' teachings were that way. Don't be anxious. Uh, don't be anxious for what you eat or what you drink or how you clothe yourself. He says that if he cares for the lilies of the field, how much more does he care for you? You know what? There, there isn't any necessity that God can't meet. There's no hole in our heart that God cannot fill. God is everything we lack and more. But in a sense, God is also the only thing that we lack. There are things out there that, that come to us uh, very, very, very easily. And however, there's nothing we really need in this life except God and God first. Whatever are the things that we perceive that we have or that we need, these are but manifestations and reminders to us of what is the thing that we truly need. And that is indeed God. You know what? We were made for fellowship with our creator. When we finish singing our songs, our songs are a way of fellowshipping with God, of letting God know that we love him. You know, God will make a way you know, to give thanks, my God and I. There are things that in those songs that, that give us a fellowship with God. When we pray to God, we fellowship with God. It is a need that we have because God is all that we truly lack. And so we were made for fellowship with him. Without that, we'd not be content even if we had all the rest of the world combined. For what will it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? We must look at the big picture. You know, having lots of things is just having lots of things. And if we die with lots of things, it doesn't make us better off. If we die with God, it does make us better off. And so if, if we do that, um, we understand that uh, we have to uh, just get in line with the way God wants our lives to be. Uh, sometimes we think we need things that we really don't need. And um, what, what we need in our lives is, is to take the next breath. What we need in our lives is to be humble servants of the Lord. Uh, physical life itself is so precious to us and we cling to it and we're supposed to. You know, God has provided uh, human beings with the intellect to, to prolong life. You know, I've had a few surgeries uh, that, you know, at least one of them that has saved my life and allowed me to live years and years longer than I might have lived. And so our, our having been created by God means simply this. It is that God is all that we truly have to have. Anything else 
is a bonus. Anything else is a bonus. God is all that we truly must have. But you know what? What we do find out is that in God's world, as believers, as those that have accepted Jesus as the Son of God, for those of us who have repented and confessed his name and been baptized for the remission of our sins, what, what we find out is that there's more than we even bargained for. He's all that we lack, and he's much, much more. You know, Jesus said, I came that they would have life, and they would have it abundantly. And the apostle Paul's words in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. You know, I always go back to the Samaritan woman at the well and Jesus offering to her living water. You know, and, and when she said, you know, uh, you know, you have to go deep into that well to get that water. And Jesus said, I have better water than that. Everyone who drinks of this water, the water out of the well, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst. But the water I will give will give give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. That's what he offered the Samaritan woman. That's what he offers to each one of us. Only if we get into God, because God is all that we truly lack. It is it is the marvelous nature of his bounty. He is a God who truly abounds. He is a God who overflows. And when we drink at his fountain, not only does he quench our thirst, but as Paul said, he gives us additional gifts to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we ask or think. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. They're bonuses to make our lives better. Our maker is a God who takes great delight in supplying us with our needs through the riches of his infinite goodness. And so we think of of the good food that we eat, the comfortable uh, uh, beds that we sleep in, the, the what I know some of us like to call the creature comforts of life, the cars that get us from place to place. These are all bonuses. These are all bonus gifts from God that through his infinite wisdom, man has progressed to the point where we can have these things. A.W. Tozier gave us this bit of wisdom. And it says, how completely satisfying to turn from our limitations to a God who has none. Hmm, isn't that great? We just understand that we're limited. God sees all. Life is, is like a parade. You know, if we watch a parade and we take our spot on the street, we watch as the things go by. But God is up there and he gets to see the whole parade from beginning to end. We don't get the luxury of seeing the very end. And we weren't cognizant at the beginning, to understand the beginning. We just know the science of it. And so I just pray that as we think of, of this lesson this evening, that we think of it in terms of God is all we lack and even more. And how completely satisfying to turn from our limitations to a God who is limitless 
to a God who has none. In order to enjoy this abundant life, to do exceedingly uh, more, uh, abundantly more than we ever thought we could, we have to be a part of God's family. And so we offer the invitation this evening for you to come to the Lord. To get what you lack, to get God in your life. So that all those things from Matthew 6.33 will be added to you. If you haven't uh, believed Jesus as the Son of God, confessed that he is, repented of your former life, and been baptized uh, for the remission of your sins, uh, we offer you that invitation this evening. Call. Uh, we will be there and we will meet your needs. Thank you so much for uh, being with us this evening. Let's end our uh, service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we've had together. We're grateful that uh, we understand that we have limitations and we know that you are able to fill those limitations. We understand that people that lack God have an empty life. And understand that we, if we want to be truly your servants, if we want to be what you want us to be, then we have to realize that you are what we lack and you are what we need in our lives. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, uh, through this evening. Uh, help us to put our head on the pillow and remember uh, you, our God, the God who uh, knows and understands all and pray that we can become more godly in our lives. Be with us. Help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Amen.